Jennifer, what are you doing? Knocking. Endurance rotation is 67, 68 RPM. Okay, get ready to match our spin with the retro thrusters. It's not possible. No, it's necessary. Let's talk about docking, aka berthing and mooring a ship. Now, we're almost year 2020, and yes, we are still securing ships by ropes. There's more advanced method like magnetic plates or mechanical levers, but overall, 99% of ships from big to small are still using ropes. Retract all moorings, Mr. Sue. Mechanical borings are inferior to ropes because they're just not as elastic, which is important to counteract the tide and waves. So let's start from the top when the ship approaches the port. The local maritime pilot climbs on board the ship to assist us in docking. They have the local knowledge of the area. They know their own port the best. Where is the shallow water? Where is the dangerous areas? The tide, the draft. What they do is similar to valet parking. And the bridge team, as usual, do their job, slowly and safely bring the ship to berth. While all that's happening up on the bridge, the fore and after mooring parties, already standing by at the bow and stern of the ship, starts to prepare the mooring lines and hydraulic equipments. Now small boats are able to dock pretty fast. But for big ships, it takes hours to bring a ship alongside. A few moments later. Two thousand years later. Tugs are always available to assist. They can either push on the ship's hull or have a tug line attached to the ship's bollard to pull. The main reason for using tugs is because the ship is docking at slow speeds. It's hard for such a big ship to move around or spin itself around. Some ships might use up to four tugs. Certain sections of the ship are reinforced so that the tugs can push on it without damaging or denting the ship. It's usually around both sides bow shoulders and stern quarters. Same thing applies when pulling. Tugs can only be pulled where there are bullets built. So in order to pass the big mooring lines onto land, we first send a smaller line called the heaving line with a monkey fist. The monkey fist is pretty heavy, but we make sure it's clear before throwing it. Avoid hitting anyone. Usually a forklift is used to move the heavy mooring lines. But in some places, they don't even use a forklift, straight up muscle power. Of course it's much safer and efficient if you have one. Each of these mooring lines have an eye that goes onto a bollard. It all seems pretty primitive, throwing things here and there, but why fix something if it's not broken? Sailors have been doing this for thousands of years. So these drums adjust to make faster ropes. We do this for all the lines, unwind and roll out the moorings. So that the shore worker can pull them onto a bollard, then tighten to secure the line. Oh, the mooring winch is the same one used in the anchor system. We switch between the two with a simple clutch. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out my anchor video for a detailed explanation of how the hydraulic system works. 
One by one, the lines roll out and roll back in. It's one of the more labor-intensive work, because sometimes you have to use manpower to pull the lines on the deck. As the officer in charge, my duty is to use the radio and relay the captain's order from the bridge to give commands to the crew working the lines. All at the same time, making sure that everyone is working in a safe manner and just not get hurt. This is especially important for snapbacks and bites, because think of the size of the ropes. A jerk or jump from the rope has the force of a cannonball. It's often fatal. And you might be thinking, why is there so many lines in different directions? Well, here we're using the standard mooring arrangement, known as the 422. There are tons of other less common mooring arrangements out there, such as the Baltic moor, running moor, standing moor, single point moor, multi boy moor, and ship to ship moor. But in this video, we'll only cover 422, the standard and most commonly used one by large cargo ships. It's two spring lines that runs along the ship longitudinal in reverse to hold the forward and backward movements. Two brass lines horizontally to hold the horizontal forces. Forehead and four stern lines holding bow and stern in. Because of the effects of tide and cargo loading, the ship's crew will have to keep checking the tightness of the rope and adjust accordingly. And finally, to cast off, just slack off the lines and the shore workers will lift the eye of the mooring ropes off the bulwarks. As always, if you've got any questions, comment down below, join the discussion, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time.